Why 93% of people cannot lose their belly fat. The three things that are stopping you from losing your belly fat. And I'm also going to give you the solutions to flip this problem around and for you to finally release your belly fat. And I have seen this countless times. And the reason I'm making this video is for people to work with myself and work with everyone in my company. We go through an interview process just to truly see if we can help you. And I keep on seeing this reoccurring problem. No, it's not carbs. It's not sugars or a particular diet, but it is something that everybody is doing. The truth is, is that I might be partly responsible for this. Why listen to me? My name is Dr. Michael Diamonds. I'm a medical doctor. I'm also a scientist. And over the last decade, all the research I have ever searched, I have applied on myself, seen results with it, seen what really works and what doesn't for me, and also applying the same with my clients and have transformed over a thousand men and women over the last 10 years, helping them release the weight and I do so successfully. So my objective in this video is for this to finally be the turning point that allows you to release the belly fat so that when someone sees you in three months from now, they'll be like, wow, what happened? What did you do? Because I am confident that one of these three things is stopping you. And I'm going to talk about the most important one that I see more often so we don't waste any time. The first thing is a thing called metabolic adaptation. And to start off with, our bodies are the most intelligent organism in the world. We are made to adapt to different scenarios. For example, we will be able to adapt to the weather conditions, right? We are able to adapt to anything our bodies put under. For example, if you sleep four hours, we all know that is not healthy for you, but your body will adapt to that. And you, after a month, may feel fine sleeping four hours. However, behind the scenes, we know that there is negative side effects to doing this and potential risk of dementia and Alzheimer's down the road. And the same applies for being able to lose your belly fat. So this is what happens. And this is where I'm responsible. I've deleted Instagram. And the reason is you'll go online and all you will hear if you follow any fitness content and if you've watched my videos before, the concept of a caloric deficit, caloric deficit, caloric deficit. And at this moment, even on the sidebar of this YouTube video, there's 10 other YouTube videos suggesting different fat loss protocols with the idea perpetuating of a caloric deficit, which we all agree with. However, what I've realized is as human beings, psychologically, we all have a strong affinity to fast, quick, simple, one week in a day, we want things quick. That is just human nature. Even the videos I make that have those keywords in there will always perform better. So what happens is we establish a caloric deficit and I'm going to use an example here. Let's take an individual. He's a male, 30 years old. His name is Jimmy. He's 200 pounds, 5'8". And for him to maintain 200 pounds, he has to eat 3000 calories, right? And we all know now to lose a pound of fat, you need to be in a 500 caloric deficit, right? So technically Jimmy should be eating 2500 calories so that he can lose weight. We all know this, right? Mike, why are you telling me this? However, what does happen is Jimmy will maybe lose some weight and he'll be very happy and he'll want to lose weight quicker. So he'll make the decision to go to 2300 calories. Hey, there's no harm followed by 2200. 2000 and less. And I know this because I actually made a poll a couple of months ago and the majority of the people that I asked, right? And look at their age and look at how many calories they're eating. We're eating sub 2000 calories. So I know this for a fact. And this is what happens. They end up losing about 15 pounds, but you get to a point where your calories are so low and you're dealing with a lot of the negative side effects, extensive hunger, brain fog, low energy, low libido, and now you don't know what to do. You've dropped 15 pounds and you're stuck and you're still at 20% body fat. Jimmy's now stuck. He was seeing great results and now he's eating 1500. And the logic is that, okay, if you're really following your diet, I should eat less, right? Well, can you? And is that sustainable? So when I speak to a lot of individuals, what I've noticed is, is that they actually aggressively cut their calories way too low. They made a lot of mistakes on the way and now their body's adapted to the calories that they've eaten and now they cannot lose any more. And this is a phenomenon called metabolic adaptation. What happens is your body starts moving less. What happens is because you're eating less, your body's burning less calories from all the food you're eating because you're also eating less food. You're not as strong as you were in the gym compared to eating 2,500. So you also lose a lot of muscle during this one to two month period. 
and your body goes from 3000 calories at base to 1500. So now you're at equilibrium and you haven't lost as much as you want. And the best analogy I can give you is when you're doing a mathematical equation. In 11th and 12th grade, you'll always solve for X, right? You'll have this long equation. And what happens is, as you keep on doing every line of this mathematical equation, if you make a mistake at any point, you're always gonna get the wrong answer, right? So if you shift the decimal point or you, you must write nine instead of six, you're always gonna get the wrong answer. And that's exactly what's happened through your journey of fat loss you've made a mistake and now you have the wrong answer. So now you need to ask yourself, do you continue trying to figure out for X or do you start the mathematical equation again? And the logical answer, but the difficult one is to start the mathematical equation again. So this is the solution to you guys who feel like you're doing everything right. You're doing 15, 20,000 steps. You're sleeping well, but you're not losing any weight. And I sympathize because it is hard to eat more food, right? Because it just sounds counterintuitive. It is hard because you're self-conscious of the way you look. You're like, damn, I still, my clothes still feel tight and I feel uncomfortable. And I want to go to the beach next week with my family and I, I don't want to eat more. I get it. I know why people don't want to eat more food. It's hard to, and especially if you go on social media, everyone is in amazing shape and they're eating all this food, but you can't. So you start to really figure out what's wrong. But take it from me, who's coached so many people and my clients finally decide to listen to me because I'm their coach. They've made the investment and they're like, I'm going to listen to you, Mike. Take this advice for free is if you're doing everything right, you need to go through a metabolic reset. So for those of you who have time, I highly recommend calculating what your true maintenance calories is. Just stop, forget everything, erase the board and calculate your maintenance calories and just eat that for a month. And in the short term, yes, your weight will increase. And sometimes in a harsh way, I tell my clients, hey, you're fat already, like you're, you have nothing to lose, right? And you won't notice. And yes, you'll gain weight in the short term because you're eating more food. There'll be more food in your gut, increasing your weight. Also, you'll be increasing your carbohydrate intake, which means more water retention, but you will get stronger, but I do get it, right? It's not nice but you just need to endure and you need to accept this because you're thinking about a bigger goal and you just need to zoom out, right? Look at a lens in the space of a year instead of thinking about how your weight is gonna react in four weeks. Think about, okay, six months from now, I'll be much happier. And I know this is difficult and this is where coaching comes in. So reset, eat, add maintenance if you have time, right? But if that's difficult for you, at the very minimum, just recalculate your calories according to your age, your current weight, your height, and all the information, and see how much you're actually supposed to be eating to lose one pound of fat a week. And it's very likely that it'll be more calories than what you're eating right now, but this is what happens, right? So in our metabolism, I'm showing you an image of a woman. These are all the factors that tabulate how many calories your body's burning. The most is your basal metabolic rate, right? Those calories that your body's burning at rest, the amount of calories your body needs to live. That's your muscle, that's your lungs breathing, that's your heart beating, that's your BMR. The second biggest factor is your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. You swinging on a chair like this, tapping, tapping your fingers, moving around, cleaning your apartment, all the things you do in a day that's non-exercise but burns calories. Even me doing this with my hand, I'm burning calories right now. That actually plays the second biggest role. After that comes a thing called to your TEF, called your thermic effect of food, which is the calories your body burns from eating food, right? So the more food you eat, the higher thermic effect of food you have. The less food you eat, the lower your thermic effect of food. And yes, eating more protein will boost this. Eating less protein will bring it down. And then finally, you have your exercise activity thermogenesis. So what happens is, if this is your calorie intake and this is your calorie output, right? All the calories your body burns, your TDEE. -E, what happens is, if you're at 1500 and you're not losing any weight, it means that your calorie intake and your calorie output is the same. That's the truth. The first option is, okay, I'm gonna eat less calories and eating 1200. Can you do that? If you can, go for it. But it's probably not something you can do the rest of your life. So what you should do is go back to your maintenance or slight deficit. So let's say your maintenance is 2500, but you decide, actually, Mike, I do wanna see my abs sooner. I'm gonna do 2300 calories. Go to 2300, right? Now, the what happens is this. Because you've put more food in your system, 
you're going to boost your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. You'll notice all of a sudden you want to walk more, you're cleaning your apartment more, you're tapping around, you're moving a lot more, you just feel better. You're like, wow, life feels more amazing with more food. And what happens is you start burning more calories. What also happens is you start getting stronger in the gym again and you boost your exercise activity thermogenesis. What also happens is because you're eating more food, you're increasing your exercise activity thermogenesis. And best case scenario, because you're eating more food, you actually end up burning more calories because you become a lot more productive. Those calories do you more good than harm. And the best way I like to say this is that you're finally giving your body the perfect amount of fuel compared to just giving it vodka, right? All that very little bad calories that you're giving it. So that's usually the first fix. And again, the hard thing for people is to do something that's counterintuitive, but that's most of the case for you do that. The second thing I see with a lot of people, especially in their ages of 35 and above, and this is one of the main reasons that most of our clients work with us is as human beings, our hormonal profile changes, right? And the biggest changes I see most often is three major hormones. The first one is insulin. The second one is testosterone. And the third one is estrogen. There's also thyroid, but I'll mention those later. So if you have not been doing the right thing or you haven't had the greatest diet or you're smoking or many factors, you may be dealing with something called insulin resistance. And what's basically happening is the best analogy I can use is insulin's function. It's a key that opens up your cells to take in all the nutrients it needs, especially glucose, right? And when you develop insulin resistance, the key becomes very rusty and it doesn't fit in the lock very well. What happens is all the food you're eating, your body's not putting it in the cells that it needs to. And if there's an increase in glucose and just nutrients in the blood, your body has to store it. So insulin resistance can cause weight gain and it's very common for people 35 and above for various factors that I'll list on the screen. It can be your age, it can be your lifestyle factors, it can be that you're going through menopause, it can be so many things that you could be dealing with insulin resistance, right? But that's usually one of the reasons. The second reason for many men is very low testosterone. Testosterone is an anabolic hormone, right? It helps men build muscle. It helps men boost their metabolism. It helps men feel stronger and confident. So when you have low testosterone, you're burning less calories, you're not as confident and you're not as strong. So it can be harder to lose weight with lower levels of testosterone. Is it impossible? No. Can it make it very, very difficult? Yes. Right. That's one of the things. And then for women with the same concept is estrogen. When your estrogen levels are very low, which women tend to start experiencing during their perimenopausal era, right? When they're in their 35s, their estrogen level gets very low. And I won't say that the hormones are like for like, right? They have their different functions, but they are equally as important to men and women, more for women in women's case. And testosterone is more important to men in men's case, right? They have higher concentrations. When the estrogen is low for women, fat loss can be very, very difficult. And usually when women are going through menopause, it becomes extremely difficult. Those three hormones are usually the culprit for not being able to lose weight. And most of the time, it's not the case for you. And I'll tell you in the third reason, and that's probably like generally this is what ha what's happening. But if you're 35 years old and above and you're dealing with some of the things that I mentioned, some of these symptoms for women, you're getting hot flushes. Um, for women, you're not sleeping really well. You're having a lot of mood swings. That can sometimes be a sign of dealing with menopausal symptoms, right? Maybe you're in a menopausal transition. And my recommendation to this one, the second category, is go and do a full blood panel and ask your primary to give you a full blood panel. Ask them to test your, your thyroid hormones, T3, T4, TSH. Ask your primary that you want to see where your hormonal levels are at. Ask them that, hey, I want to see where my testosterone is. I want to see where my free testosterone is. I want to see where my sex binding globulin is. Ask them. Say, hey, I want to see my polar hormonal profile and just tell me where they are like is it good is it not good and for women make sure that they also check for you where is your e2 where's your estrogen levels where's your progesterone levels ask them and 
this will usually tell you a lot that you need to know, right? So do a full blood panel and it's also good that you might find something that you would have never thought of. And doing a blood panel once a year is a good idea, especially when you're 35 years old and above. At Sculpt by Science, we request these so that we can look at everything. And then the third reason, stopping people from losing their belly fat, and that is your systems. And believe it or not, guys, to lose weight is easy. Example. I could sit in a sauna for 30 minutes and come out of the sauna five pounds lighter. Like you see fighters, right, who fight in MMA and UFC and boxers do this all the time. They'll sit in a sauna, they'll sweat a lot, they'll wear a sweatsuit. It's easy to lose weight or you can dehydrate yourself or you can cut carbs out completely. But we want to lose fat and losing fat is actually a skill and it is challenging to do. Actually, it's not easy. It's actually quite difficult because there's many things you need to do every day 24 seven so that you can lose fat. So people usually the third problem is systems that people don't have a good system in place. So the biggest thing I see is people will come on the phone with me to talk about joining my program and I'll say, hey, do you track calories? And they'll be like, no. And usually that's a sign that you don't care or you haven't realized how important it is in life you track everything you track your bank accounts you track your grades you track your performance at work you track all the work that you're doing tracking is important and usually if you don't track you don't care and the only what tracking does is that it allows us to make sure that everything we say we're doing we're actually doing so in the sense of weight loss we need to know how much protein carbs and fats are going in our body every day and the second thing i see people don't do is they don't weigh their food they're eyeballing it and I've, I'm showing you videos here, but look at the difference of like a tablespoon and a teaspoon of olive oil. That's a hundred calories difference. Look at the difference between this oatmeal. Look at the difference between this peanut butter. And when you're eyeballing it, if you're having four meals and you make four hundred and twenty calorie mistakes, right? You overate with the olive oil, you overate with the oats, you added too much peanut butter to your sandwich and then you overate with the ice cream that you had, then on that day, you did nothing. You are not in a caloric deficit. So eyeballing your food's another common mistake. Alcohol is a massive one, right? I see so many people drinking, right? And it's very normal. And the problem is, is that as human beings, we're, at least for me, we, we never like being in the gray area. We like on and off. That's why people love keto, because the idea of just cutting out all carbs, and I've done this myself, which can be effective, but use the strategy in the right time. But we love on and off. We love left and right. So it's very hard for someone to say, I'm only going to have three drinks, because usually it's a slippery slope. And this is where discipline comes into mind, which falls in the same category. People aren't disciplined with alcohol. So not only is alcohol ease is empty calories, right? You'll drink like one shot of tequila is 120 calories, have three of those, and that's 300. Most of your caloric deficits out the way. But not only that, alcohol will lower your testosterone levels. And in that process, when you drink alcohol for the next 24 to 36 hours, your liver and your body's main function is detoxifying this toxin you've put in your body and halting fat loss. So you lose almost two days worth of fat loss when you drink. And maybe you might do this one odd occasion. So with my clients, I say, hey, do have a drink once a week. It happens twice in a month. That can be enough for you not to see any results. And then finally, just consistency, right? You need to take the approach with this entire thing as a lifestyle. You need to be able to say to yourself, can I do this every day for the rest of my life? And those are usually the people that see the most success. So hiring a coach can teach you how to do this for your entire life. And reality is that they don't teach you this anywhere. Like in medical school, we spend two weeks learning on nutrition, right? In the six years, you spend two weeks learning on nutrition. And the two weeks of nutrition we learned was actually in pediatrics, learning how to feed a baby, right? At their different age and what they, what you give them, what to remove, what to add. They actually teach you nothing about what you should eat, like something you do your entire life. And really, that's probably the reason why heart attacks are the biggest killer chronically for human beings. That's probably why, is because they don't teach you food. And without getting into con conspiracy theories, this is the problem. So track everything, do it consistently, sleep eight hours, do all the good stuff, right? Keep it simple, keep it very simple. Guys, let me know, should I do a live stream? 
And if you want me to do one, comment down below, Mike, do the live stream and leave the video the like. If you're watching this video right now, it means you really want it. And in this live stream, I'll invite you guys to come on and we'll talk and I'll solve your problem. And maybe this can teach a lot of people, but I can interact with you guys and I can consult you and help you. And maybe I'll make this like a monthly or a weekly thing if you guys really like it. But let me know in the comment section down below. And with everything I mentioned, have you experienced this? Does, has this given you an eye opening? And I feel like when usually people cover their process, hormones and their metabolism, it happens. It's so easy and it doesn't have to be difficult for you. I really hope this video was helpful. By the way, for women's hormones, this video is amazing to watch to give you a full explanation on women's hormones.